Hi, my name is Jennifer Wittick. I'm a physical therapist. A physical therapist works in many different settings, including hospitals, long-term care facilities, outpatient clinics, sometimes in the patient's home. As a physical therapist, we work with clients who, maybe due to illness or injury, they have lost some of their abilities and some of their function. And what we like to do is try to reach goals with those patients to regain some of that function. We often work with the caregivers or the families um, on safety issues and ways that that person can become as independent as possible. Now another thing as a therapist that we are very involved in and concerned with is positioning of the clients. And that's what our topic today is, is positioning. What I'd like you to do to start this out is just to think in your mind of a time when you were on, say, a long trip in a car or a plane. Uh, maybe you were real cramped and you weren't able to stretch your back or stretch out your knee. And just recall how uncomfortable that was. And I want you to keep that in the back of your mind as we talk about this. Because the clients that you'll be working with when you're doing positioning helps with them are clients who are unable to stretch or reposition themselves. So keep that in your mind, that, that that's an uncomfortable thing to not be able to position you on your own. Now I want you to remember and be aware also that your clients need to be repositioned at least every two hours, sometimes more frequently. And if that seems like uh, overkill or like that's a lot of repositioning, Keep in mind that a healthy person like me or you during an eight hour night of sleep changes our positions probably 30 to 50 times. And that's how often we change our positions so that we can feel comfortable. So uh, that's something that your clients need from you and that's very important for them if they are in a situation where they're in bed a lot and unable to adjust for themselves. Now why is positioning important? Let's just think about the reasons why you may need to be in there changing their position for them very frequently. First of all, there's the integrity of the skin in the joints. Now if skin has pressure on it for a long period of time, your skin will break down. And joints, if they're in a, a position where they can't be stretched or moved, they become very stiff and they also can become contracted. And contracted jo joints and uh, bones and tissues are difficult to work with. It's not only uncomfortable for the client, but you as a caregiver are going to have a hard time uh, working with that patient and caring for them when they're not able to move uh, in the best possible way. Another important reason that we do positioning changes with people is just to provide activity. Keep in mind that when you're not moving about, your circulation decreases, and that's going to decrease to all the areas of your body. Another thing is when you're not moving around, your muscles are not getting that activity and that contract, relax motion. Your muscles will start to atrophy or basically waste away. Um, also, when you're very sedentary or not moving much, it's very easy for secretions to collect in the lungs and we know that that can bring about pneumonia which can be very serious um, especially in people who are elderly or disabled. Now a third reason is basically just because it makes it much easier for any of the activities of daily living. We know that if you're going to go in and help a client with feeding or um, bathing that you need to be able to change them to different positions. So that's just for the efficiency and the ease of what you do with your clients each day. And finally, a good reason for positioning is just for the client's comfort. And that certainly should not be considered least important. That's very important. Your client needs to feel that if they're in a position where they're stiff and uh, not moving about, that they have somebody who will provide um, relief for them from pressure areas on their skin and from stiff joints. So client comfort is very important when we talk about positioning. I'd like to move along to... Uh, preparing to position a client. When you're going to go into a client's room and you know that you're going to be doing a position change, just think about what types of things you'd like to have ready to go and about your safety for yourself and your client. If you're going to be uh, dealing with a client alone, you need to have communicated with somebody prior to that. Communication between the caregivers is very important. If you're in a client's room, you need to know how often is this client being um, positioned in differently. You might need to know if there's some reddened areas that somebody has been aware of and you need to keep them off of those areas. So whether you're verbally communicating or whether you're reading treatment plans, both of those things are very important before you go into 
position a client. Also keep aware they may have um, oxygen tubing, catheter tubing, IVs. They may have special sprints or splints or braces that you need to uh, apply after you change their position. So be aware of their needs. Now also be aware that if you need assistance when you're positioning a client, it's good to have that available and ready when you go into the client's room. If this is going to be a position change that requires more than just yourself, make sure that you have that other caregiver with you and ready to help you. Um, also equipment. Many times these patients have equipment uh, that they need applied after the position change. Uh, some, some of the things we've got here you may have a trochanter roll. Now a trochanter roll is something as simple as a bath blanket that's rolled and it's placed along the side of the client's leg near the hip area and what it does is it just provides support so that the leg is not externally rotating out to the side. So you roll the uh, bath blanket and you place it firmly snugly up against their leg so that it turns their leg into a position that's in alignment so that their feet are pointing uh, up towards the ceiling and not rolled out to the side. Some other things you may have in the room uh, are heel and elbow protectors. This is called a heel bow. You just apply that either to the heel or the elbow to help provide pressure relief from the surface of the bed. Uh, here's just another device that would go on the heels that's lined with sheepskin. That also provides some relief and comfort from the hard surface of the bed. Occasionally you will see a patient or a client who's got an abductor wedge in their room. This is typically used on clients who have had a hip surgery and after a hip surgery it's very important that the hips and the legs stay in alignment. So this abductor wedge is placed between their legs and kept on them sometimes all the time they're in the bed, sometimes only during a turn uh, depending on the care plan. But just so that you're aware, these pieces of equipment may be in the room and when you do a position change, you need to be aware that they may need to be applied to your client. Safety, of course, is very important. We talk about safety with all of your, um, your work with, with clients. You want to be safe yourself and with your client. That includes good body mechanics. When you work with a patient, in their bed, you want to make sure that the bed is at a proper position for your height so that you're not straining your back. You also want to make sure that if the side rails are going to be helpful for the patient to turn, that you've got the side rails up and then if you're turning them to the side opposite from you, those side rails are there for their protection as well. So safety during your positioning change. Now explanation to your client, that's very, very important. I'd like you just to kind of think of two scenarios. Um, let's say you were the patient, you were the client in the bed, and somebody rushed in, pulled your pillows out, whipped your blankets off, flipped you onto your stomach, pulled the blankets back up and left. I'm sure that you wouldn't feel very well cared for. Um, you